Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I am showing you what you can do with Bud Mini PCs. Now, if you've been following along, in the last couple of weeks, I've shown you Ubuntu on this budget mini PC. I've shown you Linux Mint, and I've shown you Zorin. And I've shown you that all of them are not really suited to this type of device. So when I talk about budget mini PCs, I'm talking about things like this. £72, £79, £85, £89, the sort of budget basic PCs that you get on Amazon that really can't perform with Windows 11, even though they say they can. And they can't really perform well with modern Linux based operating systems like Ubuntu and Linux Mint, etc. Now, there, there is a point to these videos, and there's more than one point actually. One, Amazon is selling these devices, and who are they for? Well, I think they're for people that just want to use their computer for basic things like web browsing, uh, using Office Suites, and stuff like that. So that's what these PCs are for. And I, I think the mainstream operating systems are totally unsuitable for these PCs. And so I've installed Lubuntu on this computer now. Now you've seen how, if you followed along, you'll see how the other operating systems performed quite slowly and the, it, it wasn't great at all. Uh, now that's not a reflection particularly on those operating systems because on modern hardware they all run perfectly fine but on on these budget basic PCs and probably older PCs like if you've got an old laptop or something they're not going to be suitable. So what I want to show you Lubuntu to show you what you can use on these sort of PCs but the other thing I want to talk about something else and I'm going to talk about it now right at the beginning of the, of the video. We've entered this world where um, all of the modern Linux distributions, and we'll include Windows as well, as it's a modern operating system. They've gone down this route of, like, take the installer. It's all these modern fonts. Um, they're all modern graphics and animations and what I'd like to call style over substance. And they they look great, but they perform badly on older PCs, right? Uh, I guess my point is this, is that why do we need them? Is this an improve? Has this improved our overall computing experience over the course of time? Now we're heading into this world where Ubuntu is ditching X. Uh, Zorin's probably going to go the same way because it's based on Ubuntu. And Linux Mint, um, well, Cinnamon still runs on X, so I'm not sure they're going down that route. But Wayland is supposedly the future. And... Apparently, we've hit the tipping point where Wayland's good enough that they don't want to, uh, that some distributions don't want to support X anymore, and some desktop environments don't want to support X, like GNOME don't want to. So that means that there's a whole load of devices out there that can't really run these operating systems very well anymore. And, and the question is, and I'm going to show you this in this video, have things actually improved? Are we actually making the computing world better? with all these animations and this new display server, is it really fit for purpose? If you've got a machine like this that can't run them, I mean, this machine is perfectly good and I'm gonna show you it's it's perfectly good for doing the basic computing tasks using Lubuntu. So here we have Lubuntu and it uses LXQt as the desktop environment. And it is very basic, um, but for anyone who's been using computers for the last 10, 15, 20 years, I mean, it's really easy to use. Uh, you can see how well this menu um, appears compared to the equivalent that was running under Zorin. You want to put XFCE, which was a bad move in the end on Zorin. Um, it didn't perform as well as this. Now, Execute is a very lightweight and it's actually my favorite desktop environment at this point because it stays out of the way. It you can You can launch your applications and you can use the operating system and it stays completely out of the way. You can do all the things with Ubuntu that you can with uh, Ubuntu or Mint or Zorin or Fedora or um, any other distribution that's got GNOME or KDE, but it's just lightweight. It just works with less memory. So if I want to connect to the Wi-Fi, I can just click that and enter my password. I'm not going to because I'm on a wired connection. If I want to connect to Bluetooth, I just click here. And you see I've got Bluetooth and I can just connect to that Bluetooth speaker 
and you can see up there it's asking do I want to accept connecting and it's connected we're going to close these notifications you can do something with those notifications later on uh, now one of the things when I was using Ubuntu and Zorin was when I went to watch YouTube it was a poor experience so I've got Firefox installed now I've been using the same video with the ducks from because you can see drop frames quite easily when watching these sort of things I'm running a HD mode now it's not 100% perfect but compared to Ubuntu Mint and Zorin it is a lot better and if I take it down to the, the default ATP just because it doesn't use so many animations and so much memory on the actual desktop itself gives you far more for doing things like watching YouTube videos so if we go into the menus of what's actually installed uh, I, I installed the normal installation I didn't go for the full one because it had graphics packages that I, I really didn't need so you got a game installed you got uh, LibreOffice Draw, you got an imaging tool, you got a screen capture tool, you've got Firefox, which is a web browser transmission, which is a bit torrent client, the full LibreOffice suite. Now, I've done some comparisons uh, recently. If you've seen my LibreOffice only Office WPS thing, I've compared Writer and I've compared Calc thus far. My next step is to look at presentation tools so that will be coming up shortly but LibreOffice generally performs quite well across the board it's not a, uh, it's not incredibly lightweight but at the same time it's more than usable you can see I can type quite fast obviously I'm not typing anything sensible but it is responsive under uh, sound and video we've got VLC media player they haven't included a dedicated audio player we can sort something out for that and then you've got um, system tools and things. Now, one thing you don't have with Ubuntu is you don't have snaps and you don't have flat packs and you don't, in fact, have any containerized applications. That's another thing. Um, now, I quite like uh, containerized apps and I do like the way flat packs work because it gives you applications and they're available nearly on nearly every distribution so for somebody like me who reviews a lot of distributions knowing that there's that application is going to be there doesn't matter where I go that's that's a good thing but at the same time if you're on an older budget PC it's actually better to use native packages because they do um, run faster they take up less memory they take up less disk space so so Lubuntu doesn't have any containerized apps. If you want to install apps, they've given you Discover, which is actually the KDE software manager. Now this isn't particularly lightweight, so um, this is the first time I've run this, which is why it's taken a bit of time to load. But here it is, you've got all your things that you can install and you can browse the categories, etc. So uh, if you want Super Tux Cart or if you want a card game, you can install it like that. Or you can search for an application you might want. Now, like I say, there's no flat packs. So you can't install flat packs. Now you can enable it. It's not it's not difficult to enable flat packs, but because it's a budget PC you probably don't want to now you can install Steam but this is coming straight from the Ubuntu repositories you won't find things like Spotify but if you search for Spotify it'll give you a music player so actually I recommend one of these two and uh, these would be quite good now this is one of those situations discover is a bit of a weird one to give with Ubuntu because it is quite slow um, it probably speed up over time but it's not the best tool I don't think for a lightweight machine like this but once you've got your software installed how how often are you going to go into the package manager like this now what you can do is make your life easier and install synaptic You can see this runs a lot faster.
if you want to search you just click here and you search for the package you want so if we want a web browser it's worth saying that if you go for the normal installation of Lubuntu it does come with some snaps installed if you don't want snaps installed you go for the uh, minimal install so if you want a light, lighter uh, web browser for instance I would install Falcon and then you just click apply up here and there you go And YouTube works fine on that as well. So the LXQt desktop can be customized and I have a full guide which I'll link here to um, that. But uh, for instance, I mean, this wallpaper is wonderful as it is, but you can change the wallpaper. like that and you can change this taskbar as well like that if you prefer larger icons you can obviously add other items into the panel these are the ones by default like you've got a fancy application menu but you can add one in and if you want to move it up you go like that and now all you have to do if you want quick launch icons is go into here and drag them in You can turn off some of these as well. And if you wanted your backgrounds to be a slideshow, just click that, click apply, and then it'll change your uh, wallpaper over time. But Lubuntu is the perfect distribution for this type of desktop. Now I can go one better. I can I think I can go probably a couple better than this in terms of performance, but this provides functionality as well as performance. So for your average user, it's going to be perfectly fine. And uh, it performs far better than something like Mint, Ubuntu or Zorin. So if you've got an older budget basic uh, desktop PC, that, or you've got an older laptop or older uh, computer that's low on memory or low on CPU, then Ubuntu is the way to go. And that's really it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about what I said about uh, have things improved? Because I do think that we're going down this road of, oh, we need to have Wayland. We need to have this containerized apps. We need to, we've got system D, we've got snaps, we've got everything's moving forward. But looking at Lubuntu, which is still quite using an older desktop environment uh, and using more basic apps, it's very functional and very easy to use. So I'm, I'm sort of like torn whether the, the, the new features you get in things like KDE and GNOME, etc. have actually made things better overall. And that's the end of the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.